If you want to buy your first rental property, these are the exact 10 steps you need to take. I'm going to give you the bad news now. You don't actually get to view any properties until step 10. What did he say? Oh. I've been doing this for 15 years and I've seen what happens when people skip steps. So trust me on this. Step one is an easy one because it's something not to do. Do not go and buy an expensive course. It boggles my mind, but this actually happens. People say, I just spent 10,000 pounds on this course. And now I need to find out how to buy property without any of my own money. And it's like, well, if you hadn't just spent 10,000 pounds on a course, you'd be a long way towards being able to do it with your own money. So there is absolutely no need to buy an expensive course. There are no secrets, it's fine. Instead, just carry on to step two, which is educate yourself about the basics of property. And there are so many ways that you can do this this for free or practically free. So I've written a book that tells you literally everything you need to do step by step. It costs about 12 quid. If you don't want to do that, then you can listen to the Property Podcast. There's a new episode every single week and we'll put a link below to a playlist of the best episodes to get started with. And of course, there's this channel. And again, we'll link to a few of the best videos to get started with down below. So step two is to educate yourself about the basics. Step three is to figure out what you actually want. In other words, set some goals. And this is unbelievably important because whether you want to buy one property for a bit of spare cash or become a mogul, or if you have a goal to leave your job as soon as possible versus provide for your pension, these are all valid goals, but you'd achieve each of them in a different way. So figuring out what's important to you is such a vital step before you do anything. And it's also really motivational as well because there will be some tricky stuff ahead. And if you know it's all in service of this really motivational goal, then that's gonna help. And we've got a free course specifically about goal setting. You can find it on this channel and we'll link to it below. So that's your goal, step three. Step four is how are you gonna achieve that goal? How do you get from here to there? And that's your strategy. And again, we've got a free course to help you with that, which we'll link to below. And this is so important because you can approach property in lots of different ways. And I'll often see people going down a certain route with property just because someone they know does it that way and so they think that's the only way or they've seen someone be successful with a particular method they therefore they think that that's something that they should do but this is a big mistake because the strategy that you use can be very well suited or very ill suited to the particular goal that you've set it's like you can go to the gym and lift weights or you can go to the gym and run on the treadmill but they will both get you to very different outcomes. So you have to know what you're actually aiming for before you turn up at the gym. So our course runs you through the major property investment strategies, what they're good for, what they're not good for. And it will also encourage you to think about three vital factors when it comes to property investment, which are time, skill, and money. Those are the three absolute core elements when it comes to investing. You're gonna be strong on some and weak on others. And so you need to know that and you need to choose a strategy that plays into it. So for example, if you've got absolutely no time, you're not going to want to go into a really intensive strategy that involves flipping property. It's just not going to make any sense. Now, step five, it shocks me that people don't do this. I feel like I shouldn't need to say it. Yet I see people go wrong with this all the time. So apparently I do. You need to know how much have you got to invest. Seems pretty fundamental. And people often seem to struggle to know the answer to this. But actually, it's really straightforward. There's a totally simple formula. The first thing is to obviously know how much cash you've got. How much do you want to invest? Then multiply that by three. Why multiply by three? Because you're probably going to be investing using a mortgage. We've got a video about mortgages that explains why you'd want to use them and how to go about it, which again, we'll link to below. You'll probably be using a mortgage for 75% of the property's value meaning that you'll need to put in 25%. So that would be multiplying by four. I'm saying multiply by three because you're going to have other costs as well. You're going to have stamp duty. You're going to have professional fees. There's going to be other stuff in there and you want a bit of a buffer. So I always say multiply by three to be on the safe side. If you're going to be doing some kind of major refurbishment, then that's going to be extra. So you have to work out for the type of property that you're looking at, for the type of extent of changes you want to make, What's that going to cost you and budget that in? Okay, step six is to research different areas. 
This comes after figuring out your buying power because that's going to rule certain areas out. So bearing in mind the amount of cash that you've got and also bearing in mind your goals and your strategy and everything you've done so far, you can start researching different areas. We, of course, have a video about this. We've got a video about our favorite areas. We'll link to that below to give you a starting point for your research. Obviously, your criteria might be different. Now you've got your area, you can start thinking about individual investments within that area. Just thinking about, you can't go and look until step 10, I told you that. Getting right move alerts set up for the area, the price range, the property type, and using that to start practicing assessing deals. So we've also got a video about how to run the numbers on a property deal. And that video comes with a free spreadsheet that you can use. And you can use that as a template to assess deal after deal. If you do that for one property every day, so you look at 30 properties, then you're going to develop such a knowledge of your area and you're going to be so well practiced at going through this process, you'll get really fast at it. So when you're then looking at deals for real, which you will be soon, you'll be doing it quickly and you'll be doing it reliably and you'll be able to quickly and efficiently count different opportunities in or out. Step number eight is to go and talk to a mortgage broker because we're just assuming that you're going to be able to go and borrow money. And the reason that I haven't put it in as an earlier step is that most people can. It's rare that you're going to have too many issues going and getting a buy to let mortgage. If you believe that you are, maybe you're an expat, maybe there's something in your credit history, maybe it's something like you're not a homeowner, which makes it more difficult as well. You might want to go and check with a broker earlier. Everyone should be going and forming a relationship with a broker at this point, because it means you'll know for sure that you are able to proceed. And also it means that when you do then find something that you're interested in, you'll have a broker lined up, you can run it past and check that there's no issues with the property in terms of mortgage ability before you make an offer on it. Step nine is to decide on your tax structure. So this is whether you should buy it as an individual or in a limited company. You must decide this and get it right before you make an investment. Because if you change your mind later, it's very, very expensive to shift from one to the other. So while you're doing your research, while you're learning, while you're practicing analyzing deals, go speak to a tax advisor and figure out whether you should be investing in a limited company or as an individual. We, surprise, surprise, have a video about this as well, which we'll link to down below. That will give you a useful rule of thumb about which is likely to be right for you. And there's also a document, a list of questions that comes with that, that you can make sure that you have the answers to before you go and speak to a tax advisor. So they're able to give you the right advice for you. Then finally, we're on to step 10. Yes, you can actually go and view some properties now. So when you find something and you run the numbers on it, you've done the analysis, it looks like it suits your needs and you know that it does because of your strategy and your goals and everything that we've built up, then you can do the fun bit. You can call the estate agent, you can book a viewing, and you can go and have a look around and finally feel like a proper property investor. Again, I know that's what you really wanted to be doing from the beginning, but ultimately you will be so glad that you've been through all the other steps first. And when you do get to this point and you find something that it does seem like ticks your boxes, then ideally you want to have someone more experienced who you can run it past. They don't have to be an absolute world expert. Even if you've just got a friend who's bought a couple of properties, they're still going to know more than you do. And so being able to get their input on it is going to help you out. And if you don't have anyone like that, then you've got your mortgage broker. Mortgage brokers, if they're buy to let specialists, have seen a lot of deals, like thousands. So while they're not going to come and walk around it with you, they should be able to take a look and give you some pointers about the type of thing you should be looking out for, the kind of thing that you might want to ask. But even if you do all of this, even if you religiously follow every step in order, there are still three mistakes that you might end up making. And I know that you might because I see new investors do it again and again and again, and it really hurts them. So watch this video next where I'll explain what those mistakes are and the very simple steps that you can take to make sure that you avoid them.